Good evening. My name is Luke and I'll be the moderator for tonight's webinar. We are still waiting on a few more attendees before we are going to begin with the session. So it'll take about one more minute. Good evening again, everyone. So my name is Luke. I'm a current law student uh, within the undergraduate program at Macquarie's Law School. Uh, tonight I am joined with Dr. Lise Barry and Mr. David Walsh will be helping out as our panelists for tonight. So before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the Macquarie University land, the Wanamagal clan of the Darug Nation, whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land since the dream time. So we pay our respects to present, past, to elders, uh, past, present, and future. So in terms of structure for the webinar this evening, after my brief introductions of the panelists, uh, Dr. Barry will provide a short presentation on the nature of the Juris Doctor. And then this will be followed by a online Q&A session. So during the webinar at any point, if you have any questions, about the Juris Doctor, about the presentation, or about the experiences of either Dr. Barry uh, or David Walsh, feel free to go into the Q&A form at the bottom of the Zoom uh, HUD and throw in your questions there and we'll try and answer them all. So a recorded version of the webinar will be available online and it'll also be attached to uh, a post webinar email for your convenience. So by way of introduction, first we have uh, Dr. Lise Barry, who is our Associate Professor and Deputy Dean of Macquarie Law School with the overall responsibility uh, of learning and teaching in the school. Her hidden talent is surf sports and she's passionate about surf life saving and competes in board, surf, ski and iron woman events. Her guilty pleasure is must sticks, but most of all, she loves to help students achieve their goals and potential. And she is joined tonight by our student representative, Mr. David Walsh. David is a Macquarie alumni student, having completed a Bachelor of Commerce professional accounting degree at Macquarie and graduated in 2016. He has previously worked at a big four accounting firm for four years and has recently moved to an international property company. Last year, he started studying law at UNSW and moved to Macquarie Uni at the beginning of this year. He has played basketball for the past 16 years and loves long distance hiking. So to get us started tonight, I will invite Dr. Barry to provide some general information about the JD at Macquarie. Thanks so much, Luke. And it's lovely to be with everyone tonight. Luke, can you just give me a thumbs up to make sure you can hear me properly? Great, fantastic. So I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about the Juris Doctor in general before we throw to some questions and about Macquarie Law School as well. So Macquarie Law School uh, really prides itself on educating lawyers in context and law graduates for the future practice of law, whatever that might look like. And in fact, that picture there is our future law school. So we're really excited about plans we have for building that law school right now. Hopefully we'll be turning the ground on that one in the next six months or so. Uh, the big round part of the building that you can see there is going to be our new moot court. And that, as you can see, that'll be the Michael Kirby Law Building. So who knows, maybe you'll get a chance to step foot inside that new building as well if you come and join us as part of the Juris Doctor. So the Juris Doctor uh, falls within our largest suite of law courses at Macquarie Law School. And of course, it's a postgraduate course. So applicants for the Juris Doctor uh, would ordinarily have an undergraduate degree, 
And uh, because they already have that degree, it's slightly shortened. So anyone who wants to practice law in New South Wales must have at a minimum a three year full time laws degree. And so that's where the Juris Doctor fits in for us. Now it is, as I say, a qualification for practice of law in New South Wales, but as well as preparing students to become legal practitioners, it gives all of our students that grounding in law, in legal analysis, in critical thinking, in understanding how the law operates in different contexts, so that students who are perhaps are not considering practice as law, but perhaps you're looking at advancing your career in another way, in a management role or risk and compliance, insurance, in health management, a Juris Doctor is a really good grounding for those kinds of career changes and career advancement as well. But we do find that many of our Juris Doctor students are mature age students who are just at a point where they're looking for a new career challenge and they think that uh, law might be the right career for them. All of the students in the Juris Doctor do get an opportunity to take law electives as well although because it's a shortened law degree and a lot of the units are prescribed by the accrediting authorities, you only have a small number, you have six law electives towards the end of your degree. We also pride ourselves at Macquarie University on our really outstanding PACE experience. That's our professional and community engagement unit. So all students get that opportunity to put their law into practice and at Macquarie Law School, that can range from work at the Western Sydney Legal Centre with their family law clinic, through to advising people at the help desk in the Land and Environment Court, uh, human rights placements with organisations overseas and within Australia. Uh, some of our partners as well include uh, Food Bank and the Rule of Law Institute. So there are all sorts of opportunities for practical experience and you get credit for that experience as well. There's also an opportunity as a postgraduate student to be involved in, in mooting and that can sometimes be for credit as well. So our Juris Doctor students are um, eligible to apply for the Jessup International Law Moot towards the end of their degree. And of course, to be part of our really vibrant student body. Uh, the Macquarie University Law Students is the biggest student association on campus. And they run in conjunction with the law school a lot of mooting competitions. Uh, they have social events for undergraduate and postgraduate students, social justice events, careers nights, speaker nights, um, and uh, our very highly sought after um, social justice trivia night as well that happens once a year, all the, the law staff get involved in that as well. But there are a lot of opportunities as part of your Juris Doctor to come on campus, interact with other law students and um, take part in those kinds of events as well. So as I said, we're preparing people not just for um, careers in the law, but careers that utilise that uh, legal knowledge outside of law as well. I think one of the really distinguishing features about the Juris Doctor, and David might speak about this a little bit later, is our approach to, um, to learning and to flipped learning and flexible learning and online learning. So we recognise that a lot of our students are mature age students. And in fact, around two thirds of the Juris Doctor students are external students. So they're balancing work and study and of course family life and probably like David and myself, sporting commitments as well. So we offer a lot of our learning online, which means we really attract very self-directed learners. Um, lectures are all pre-recorded. Uh, you are able to come to lectures when they're held on campus as well, but most of our students would be listening to the recorded versions of lectures. And then we take you through uh, guided reading in preparation for tutorial discussions. For our internal students, those tutorials are once a week, but for external students, we have a two-day, usually a two-day workshop in the middle of the semester 
uh, where you get together with other students. So it's not entirely online. You should realise that there is a compulsory face-to-face -face component for every unit. Um, but what we find is students really value that opportunity to get together with their cohort, to talk through tutorial problems, and um, engage in you know, legal role plays, in mooting, in skills practice, face-to-face, -face, as well as having that online experience. Uh, so, as I said, around two-thirds of our students are external students. We have around, in, in any one intake um, per year, we probably have around uh, 100 or so Juris Doctor students. So, the internal cohort at the moment is around uh, 25, and then there's about 50 external students in the same group. So relatively small class sizes, and what we find is that the Juris Doctor group becomes quite a tight-knit group as they travel through the degree together. But there is that flexibility to go from being an internal student to an external student if your situation changes, and vice versa. So the entrance requirements for the Juris Doctor are that you have um, an, an Australian Level 7 Bachelor's degree or its equivalent from overseas, uh, a weighted average mark of 65 or above, and there's also an English language requirement there as well. This um, next slide just shows you a typical study plan for a Juris Doctor student. As I explained, a lot of what you study in law is actually mandated by the admission authorities. So all law students, for instance, have to study contracts, tort law, criminal law, inter, um, tort law and so equity and trust and so on. So you find those compulsory units throughout your degree. And then towards the end of the degree, as you can see, you get to decide on some of the electives as well. Uh, there's a, some flexibility to take these in different orders depending on your circumstances and to move, as I said, from being full-time or part-time, internal to external. And we also have a recommended course of study for our part-time students. So for a part-time student, generally you would be looking at um, undertaking the Juris Doctor over a six-year period. Uh, I might pass back to Luke now. He's um, perhaps got some questions um, from you already and um, also uh, we're going to hear a little bit more from David about what it's like to be a Juris Doctor student. Thank you, Dr Barry, for your insights there. It's always great to hear uh, from someone within the law school. So I've already done a brief introduction of David Walsh, who is a current JD student. If, JD, if David would just like to introduce himself again, and then we'll get started with some Q&A questions. A uh, reminder to put them down in the chat function below, and we'll try and answer as many as possible. Hey everyone, um, David here. Um, I might give a bit of a background about myself. Um, so I initially did my undergraduate degree at Macquarie as well. I studied a Bachelor of Commerce in Professional Accounting. Um, and as part of that Professional Accounting degree, I did do one or two, I think three law units actually, um, just as part of the business law side of the Professional Accounting. Um, and, but when I graduated, I then moved into a big four accounting firm and have been there pretty much for the past four years. Um, I've just recently um, moved employment to um, an international property company. Um, but I also just moved to Macquarie to do my postgraduate as well in law because last year I started doing law at UNSW and have just moved to Macquarie and I'm absolutely loving it. Thanks for that, David. So we'll just uh, move along to the Q&A uh, portion of the webinar. And just straight away, David, what was your biggest fear before you started studying law as you came uh, from another degree? And, and what inspired you to study law? Um, I suppose I'll start with what inspired me first. So in doing my professional accounting degree, I did have to do those. Um, they were kind of overview law units. Um, and I loved them. I thought it was very interesting, the 
the gray area that um, law is that there's always an argument for both sides. And I love that process that you'll work towards getting a solution. Um, and I was quite hesitant in taking on a, a degree, particularly last year when I first started. Um, but I found like one of the biggest um, worries for me was balancing with full-time work. So that's something that actually attracted to uh, me to Macquarie is that the ability to um, balance both full-time work and university as well. And that's something that's great about Macquarie. Fantastic. And so are you a full-time or a part-time student? And how has this impacted the way that you're studying for Juris Doctor? So I'm currently technically a full-time student doing three units. Um, and I suppose I, I started this semester initially choosing to do three, mainly because I thought, well, these are the three units that I'm interested in. I'll see how I go. It is my first semester at Macquarie. Um, and if I get into a situation, I can always like um, change my circumstance. But I found beginning to manage with the three units um, has been very manageable for myself. Um, I do need to be very structured with my time and make sure that I do know when assessments are due and when other readings are ready, like need to be done for the tutorials. Um, but balancing both the internal side, so I'm doing one unit internal, which is the week to week um, tutorial sessions, and two of my units are actually external. Um, so finding the balance between both having a part internal and part external is fantastic for me because it means that I can structure um, my work life around my university life very well. So as Lise mentioned, the external units were um, two day intensive courses. Um, and I just thought it went brilliantly. Yep, and just on that, we've had a few questions about external and internal students. So maybe Dr. Barry, if you could just clarify what that means and what it would entice for an external or internal student. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, our external students typically are part-timers. So um, as, as David explained, if you're a full-time student, you're taking three or four units. If you're um, a part-time student, you'll be taking two units usually. So if you're an external student, you're still listening to weekly lectures and doing weekly reading. Do you have the same, what a university would call volume of learning? The same volume of learning as an internal student, but instead of doing a weekly one hour tutorial over 12 weeks, you would have two full days. And these two days are often supplemented by online uh, webinar tutorials towards um, the final part of the semester as well, just to cover off um, you know, a review of the content from the second part of the course. Uh, so you're following the same lectures that internal students are, but instead of going to weekly classes, you come for two days and we make sure that um, the, the scheduled days for the compulsory units don't clash. We, we try and put them together. So typically if a student was outside of Sydney, because of course we have external students from all around Australia, they would travel to Sydney just across, um, you know, maybe six days and come for, you know, two or three of their subjects over that, that time. Yep, fantastic. So we, we've had a few questions, particularly for you, David, about with this uh, balance between your studies and work, have you found that the, the performance in the workplace has suffered from this or how have you been able to balance this? Um, the way that I'm able to balance it is really structuring my time. I, I don't believe that my performance um, in the workplace or for my JD has been uh, suffered detrimentally. Um, as I have just started a new job um, just in the past six months, I have obviously had to perform well because it's a new role. Um, and so I don't think that's suffered at all but I'm very interested in the law units that I'm doing. So it doesn't really seem like a, a chore or a struggle to be working each night or doing extra readings or um, really following up on questions that I have because I enjoy it and the lecturers and the tutors that I've had have made it very interesting and actually very relevant. So it's not um, 
like a, a struggle to study it, it's actually quite interesting well, for me. Yep, sounds awesome. So did you know, David, when you were going into the Juris Doctor, what type of law you wanted to study and what area you wanted to go into before you had started it? Um, before I started, um, I kind of did. I, I knew that like in my previous employment, um, um, I've like obviously been working as um, a chartered accountant. And so I obviously had um, some exposure to the commercial aspect of law and would often deal with lawyers in that commercial sense. And I found it very interesting, some of the work that they would do. So that's something that I was um, already leaning towards when I first started. But having done some other units such as CRIM, um, I found that very, very interesting. So it's kind of put me in a, in a situation now where I'm interested in both. And I think that as I do more units, it's going to open my eyes to different areas of law that I didn't really know too much about. And I'm just going to be looking at all different aspects. Um, but I haven't decided on which route I'm going to go down. Um, I'm only at the end of my first year, so I've still got a little bit of time to decide. And, and if I can just add in there, Luke, that I think that's not uncommon for Juris Doctor students to you know, have a feeling like they would, they would like to practice law, but not necessarily knowing what that entails and, and not necessarily understanding all of the different kinds of careers that open up to you with a law degree. Uh, I know that a lot of students um, change their mind. You know, they, they come in thinking that they really want to focus on, say, social justice, but then, um, you know, their experience in some of the commercial law units is really positive and they change to that. And I've seen the opposite happen as well. Uh, I'm thinking of, of one graduate who was very firm that she wanted to go into international law and social justice and now she's one of the leading insurance lawyers in New South Wales. So it's not uncommon, I think, to, to find new passions as, as you go through your law degree. And particularly with our PACE units, when you get to experience you know, law in practice as well in, in different ways. So that gives you that, that chance to have a little taste as well while, while you're in law school and get credit for that. Yep, that's great to hear. And as a student as well, I can reiterate that you don't realise how much you enjoy a subject until you do it. Um, I did taxation law and I never thought I'd be so fascinated into it until I was a few weeks in. Uh, so we've got another question uh, for you, Dr. Barry, more on the administrative areas. So can you start in session two? And if so, when does the application process finish? Yeah, you absolutely can start in session two. We're still taking applications for session two 2020 and applications for session two via UAC will be open until the 10th of July. So it's still a lot of time to get your applications in. Uh, another question for you, David, more on what it's like as a student, but what are the assignments and the different type of assessments that you do during the degree. So are these like group projects, are there essays? What have you been doing throughout uh, the preliminary years of your degree? Um, so most of the work that um, I've kind of done this semester, because this is my first semester at Macquarie, it has adjusted slightly because of COVID, but um, the original assessments, some of the ones that I would be doing, um, there were um, case studies. So, um, like, obviously, a situation given to you and you answer questions on them, um, ranging from multiple choice quizzes, um, some presentations, um, like, in, um, in class, obviously, back in February. Um, then um, essays, there's a whole range of them. Um, Luke, one thing I would say, and students are often interested to hear this, is that we don't have any formal sit down invigilated exams at Macquarie Law School. Um, so we've moved to more um, authentic assessments and real life assessments and um, there aren't any situations that I know of as a lawyer where you can't look up the answer, including when you're in court these days, you'll see lawyers there with their, their laptops open. They can um, be searching for cases even while they're, you know, advocates in court. So uh, we do have time limited open book exams, but 
students sit those online from home. So a little less pressure in terms of, you know, some people find formal closed book exams very daunting and um, anxiety inducing. Um, that isn't a form of assessment at Macquarie Law School. So, but you might be called upon to, you know, be engaged in a pretend court case or um, do a client interview video or an online negotiation. And as David said, you know, more traditional assessments like writing essays or um, legal problem solving tasks, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And from a practical perspective, uh, Leith and David as well, in terms of support services, where can a student go if they do feel overwhelmed by the work? Uh, as we do know, law is something where you do have to put a lot of hours in and a lot of reading to get good marks. So where can students be looking to for that support? So there, there's a wide variety of support services at Macquarie University for everything from our student wellbeing services for any students with you know, particular mental health problems or perhaps they have some form of disability and they require adjustments to assessments or materials through to the learning skills staff at the library who offer writing skills workshops, examination skills workshops, and um, you know just gen advice about studying and preparing. But, um, you know, I, I don't think uh, anything can beat forming a really good um, study group amongst your peers and working together um, on your, um, your your weekly learning materials and, uh, you know, tackling assessments um, as well. So we always encourage students as well to form study groups as a support and that includes external students. You know, you can form those groups online just as much as you can um, face to face. and probably getting you know more and more experience at that sort of online connection through this um, time of lockdown and COVID. And practically speaking David how many hours a week would you say you dedicate to each subject so how would you uh, and give the attendees basically an idea of how would you structure your week when you're dealing with different uh, units? So I usually tend that it um, um, I usually spend about four to five hours a week on each unit. Um, that's outside of the standard assessments. So um, hypothetically say um, I'm doing say three units at the moment um, and I've got say one assignment due next week. I'll do the 15 hours for the three units this week and then obviously spend the time additionally to work on those assessments. Um, the way I usually structure it is I try to chip away at it during the night so um, I obviously work um, a full-time role. So it's usually when I get home from work, I'll spend like say two to three hours or even on my commute in the morning, do some readings or um, watch some of my lectures. And I find that chipping away at it means um, by the time it gets to like seven or eight o'clock at night, you're done like a decent amount of work and then gets to the weekend, you're not spending your entire both days of your weekend trying to catch up on all these readings and all these tutorial questions or watching lectures that should have been done during the week. And it's just making sure um, you get yourself into a routine. So, you know, oh, on this day, I'm going to be watching this lecture or on this day, I'm going to be doing these readings and trying to get as much done during the week. So then you can enjoy your weekends um, as much as you can. Yep. That is super important. David, to enjoy the weekends. You can't just be grinding away and reading big law textbooks all the time. <laughs> so, Dr. Barry, uh, we have a question about if you, someone is planning to do the Juris Doctor and they're not planning to be a lawyer or barrister, how can this degree help them perhaps in other industries? Oh, sure. Like, I, I think, um, you know, every industry has elements where the law impacts on them, whether it's through um, compliance requirements. So for instance, if you work in um, aged care and elder law is one of my areas of research, then you need to understand the Aged Care Act. You need to understand the regulations that apply to um, the provision of care. Uh, you need to understand, you might need to understand um, 
human resources law, employment law. So law impacts on every aspect of our work and life in, in ways that we don't usually think about until you come along and, and do a law degree. So it's definitely relevant for anyone who wants to move into a role in senior management um, and anyone who's sort of dealing with contracts or intellectual property. These are the kinds of um, questions that come up you know, in, in a whole range of industries, whether it's construction, banking, aged care, health, law impacts on all of those. And we had a few more questions about uh, what's involved in the application process, including is anything to do with professional experience encapsulated in that application process? Just to give the attendees a better idea. Sure, look, it, it's always worth um, via UAC form making note of what your uh, employment is, um, because when um, applications are borderline, that's certainly something that we would take into account. Um, there is a, an alternative pathway that uh, people might want to know about as well. And if they feel like their undergraduate degree might not have given them the weighted average mark that we require for entry into the Juris Doctor. So as I was saying before, it's 65 as your undergraduate WAM for entry into the Juris Doctor generally. Um, but we also have a graduate certificate um, the graduate certificate is done part time over one year and um, we take entry into the graduate certificate only in session one. But if you manage to complete um, four units as part of your graduate certificate, then you can um, move into the Juris Doctor from there. And all of those four units are compulsory units in the Juris Doctor. So it's absolutely you know, not wasted time, but it just gives that um, like pathway into the Juris Doctor, a part-time taster of some of the early compulsory units. Um, and yeah, with that slightly slower pace while you get used to studying, but with the lower entry. Um, so that is a pathway that students might want to consider if they haven't met the threshold for entry into the Juris Doctor. Mm -hmm. And is there a guide to when the offers will be sent out? I'd have to get someone from um, admissions to let people know when offers are made. So I'm sorry, I can't answer that question. Uh, I don't know if anyone else on the panel would know the answer to that. Yep, no worries, Dr. Barry. I think we'll just move to speaking more generally. And uh, some people are asking a bit about the experience of you, uh, David. But why, did, uh, why Macquarie Law School and what have you really got out of it? And maybe Dr. Barry as well could give us a bit of an idea about why Macquarie Law School. Uh, Lisa, did you want to kick us no, off? You, you go first, David. Like okay, I, I think sure. it's it's in you know you're, you've experienced a couple of law schools now. You're in a good position to to be able to say from a student perspective. So what I've loved about Macquarie University is really the balance between both internal and external. That I didn't want to give up full-time work and I didn't really want to drop down to part-time work either. I wanted to be able to um, continue with my work um, portfolio and building my career in that sense while also pursuing this avenue. And um, my previous um, situation, I found that um, the online learning portion really wasn't working for me personally. Um, that I think everyone's individual and they need to find what works for them. Mm. And this balance that Macquarie has right now between online learning and face-to-face -face learning is absolutely fantastic. I can't speak higher of it. Um, the ability to like reach out to your lecturers or your conveners um, and send messages to them um, if you have a question about a reading or if you just didn't understand something in a lecture and asking during consultation hours, um, whether that's online, over the phone, or even face-to-face, -face, um, is brilliant. Um, something else that um, I've really enjoyed as well is they had um, this in my undergraduate degree for accounting, and I'm loving that we've got the ability to do it for law as well, is these peer-assisted learning sessions where they set up a study group um, and say, you'll meet at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday and 
you work through problem questions together in that group ability to discuss different facets of what you heard in the lecture or what you read in the textbook in the past week is like brilliant because you're actually discussing with other people who are reading the same things as you and bringing their own ideas to it, which opens your own doors and opens your mind to different problem areas that you might need to work on. And I'm sure at the same time you help others in that sense. Um, but that's really the ability to do the, a lot of the degree online and that balance between the two, between both face-to-face -face and online, because it's not just purely online, um, really won me over at Macquarie. I think I, I would probably add to that, that um, factor of flexibility and um, the, the approach to law at Macquarie University, which is to teach law in context. So to understand not just what the law is and be able to spit out, um, you know, the latest case or, you know, understand the, you know, what the name of the legislation is and how it's applied, but understand why is it the way it is? How did, how did we get to this piece of legislation? What were the historical and political factors um, that are the context for this law in particular? Because if you can understand that, you can also, you're more prepared to understand how to interpret law and also to change law. And law isn't static. It changes in the, um, depending on the um, economic, political, historical context that we find ourselves in. So we're always trying to think of what's the context of the law now? What's going to be facing our students in the future? and thinking about how can we prepare them for that future to be critical thinkers, to understand what needs to change and how the law fits into those changes. So I would say that's a key part of, of law at Macquarie as well. And as David mentioned, uh, we're small enough that you can um, make appointments to speak to your lecturers. Um, you know, we have full-time staff, not just lecturing, but also tutoring in units. We have a weekly consultation. Students can come and speak to us in person. Uh, you can also reach out to us online. So there's lots of opportunity to get support from your tutors and from your lecturers as well. I'd also like to reiterate that as a student, that support network is always there and it's been a, a really uh, a part that's really set apart my degree, uh, in my opinion. So Dr. Barry, We've got a few questions from people about after they complete the Juris Doctor and about how it would work in terms of being able to practice the law afterwards. So sure. practically, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. It just how would you have to get assessed in every state? Sorry, what was that, Luke? The last part? Would you yep, sure. So would you have to get assessed in every state individually to practice law? Oh, okay. No. No, if once you're admitted to law in any state in Australia, we have what's called a travelling practising certificate. So if you're uh, admitted to practise in New South Wales, you can practise. So that will be recognised in other states as well. But um, there are a couple of requirements for admission to law after you finish a law degree. So there are eligibility requirements and suitability requirements. So as I mentioned, anyone who wants to practice as a lawyer needs to complete an accredited uh, degree that's a minimum of three years duration. But there's then an additional education requirement of um, practical legal training that you can undertake at the College of Law or through a number of courses offered at different universities as well. So that's on top of your law degree. And also included that in that is a practical element where you're required to um, do some volunteer hours under supervision and also to study practical legal skills, of course, through the college. So once you complete that as well, and that can be around six months of duration, then you apply to be admitted, but you also have to be able to meet certain character requirements. So uh, you have to attest that you're a fit and proper person to practice law in Australia, that um, you've declared any criminal convictions, that you're not a bankrupt and so on. So eligibility and suitability requirements on top of the three year degree in order to practice.
Yes, thanks for that, Lise. Uh, we have a few more questions about how students can fast track their degree and if there are any summer units available. Is this an option at Macquarie Law School? Yeah, definitely. We, we usually, in the Juris Doctor, for instance, we offer some of our compulsory units over summer. So we offer um, jurisprudence and legal ethics and also the remedies unit, which is one of the final units over the summer. So um, you can fast track it to a degree. Um, as I say, we have to also be fitting into those accreditation requirements. So there is a limit to the number of units that you can be taking um, within any year, but some flexibility there. And we also do offer some electives and PACE units over the summer as well. Um, so some ability, I, I would say most of our students would uh, be completing their degree over three years, but there are some students who would finish in two and a half. I wouldn't recommend trying to do it any faster than that. Um, I think you, you might drive yourself crazy as well as your family if you are cramming that much study into anything less than that. Wise words, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few more questions about Commonwealth supported places. Can you give us a bit more of an idea about how that works and the requirements there? Yeah, sure. So we do have a limited number of Commonwealth supported places and they're offered on a competitive basis. So I can't tell you an exact number of places because I don't know how many have already gone out yet by the admissions team, for instance, for session two. But um, on average, you, you require a distinction or above um, grade in your undergraduate degree on average. So it's quite a high standard, quite Quite a high wham that's required for one of those commonwealth supported places but they are available in the Juris Doctor. And David we have a few more questions about uh, what your general aspirations are after you complete this degree. So where do you hope to work moving forward and what are your passions in terms of can you make a difference in society with your degree? Um, I, I suppose I'm still trying to decide which way to go down, but something that I am quite passionate about is my sister has a severe disability and I've always been interested in disability law just because I've seen how much um, the law impacts my sister. Um, and so I'm hoping to like somehow move down that path, um, whether it's through NFP work or through government work, but that is something that I am very passionate about. And Luca, our um, graduates go into all kinds of work, um, but I should, I should emphasise that the career prospects are really good for law graduates. Um, the latest graduate survey, uh, we found that 89%, uh, I think it was, of graduates from the Juris Doctor between 2017 and 2019 had found full-time employment four months out of their Juris Doctor. And having followed our early Juris Doctor cohorts from beginning to end, I would say it's not uncommon for 80% of them to have full-time legal work at the time of graduation. So everything, everything from judges, tip staffs in the federal court, uh, through to you know, working with Rugby Australia, through to um, working in the disability sector or health sector, um, mediation. So there's a whole different range of careers that our graduates go into from the Juris Doctor. And are there any uh, opportunities for students to network potentially with future employers before they actually graduate? Absolutely. I, our, um, as I was saying, Mulls, the Law Students Society is just fantastic in organising those kind of events. Even during COVID, we've had, they've had online meet and greet with um, representatives from human resources from various law firms. We've had careers nights um, and they include legal careers as well as non-legal and alternative careers events. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities for networking and getting to um, speak to a whole range of people. And then I think the other way that a lot of students meet people in the industry is through mooting when they get to meet um, judges in the various competitions. So for instance, I've been involved um, just this week in online competitions for client interview and negotiation and the judges in those 
competitions include people who are judges in real life, but also barristers, solicitors, people in legal publishing. So there are the more opportunity, there are plenty of opportunities out there and it's a matter of just getting really involved in the competitions and in the law society to take advantage of all of those, as well as, as the PACE unit that I mentioned at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And what's the benefit of those competitions? Just to reiterate, what do students get out of it? Look, it's a really amazing way to hone your skills. So there are basically two kinds of competitions. There's a mooting competition, which is uh, where you get to hone your legal advocacy skills and argue a legal case. And it could be in contract law, constitutional law, international humanitarian law. Um, I should just take this opportunity to brag that the Macquarie uh, Law School team came second in the world to Oxford University last year in the international um, Nelson Mandela humanitarian uh, law moot. We've also had um, world championship teams in client interview. Um, so we do really well in, in mooting. So there's the, the sort of legal mooting, but then there's the skills mooting as well. So you get to hone your skills in speaking to clients and interviewing them about their legal problems. So really great way to practice your communication skills. And there's also a negotiation moot. Uh, but there are, you know, all kinds of mooting opportunities, both inside Macquarie University and outside in national and international competitions if students are interested in those. Good to hear, Lise. Good to hear we're second to Oxford. That's a good standard to set. <laughs> That's right. So we have a few more questions about, we, uh, we heard about PACE. Maybe Dr. Barry, you could talk about what PACE involves and what students have done in the past. Sure, so that look, there's so many opportunities and they change all the time. We're adding to our suite of PACE units all the time. But if students already have a job um, say as a paralegal um, or a, a legal secretary or doing conveyancing or something along those lines. So we do have students in that sort of situation where they're involved in the law and they would have a solicitor at their work who can supervise them. They can count that as part of their PACE experience. That could be their PACE unit. And then there would be some assessment involved as well. Um, writing about reflective practice and some um, work also on professional ethics. So there is that kind of a PACE unit where you're counting your current work practice if it's closely enough associated with legal work. But if you don't have those kind of connections, then we help arrange your PACE unit for you. Um, so I can say like this semester, we have opportunities uh, working with um, the National Justice Project on refugee and migration law cases. So our law students are actually interviewing refugees to help them in preparing for their case. And our students will be under the supervision of practicing solicitors as part of our social justice clinic at Macquarie University uh, through to other students you know, doing things like working for uh, Wagga Wagga Council, a group of our students worked on a project for them, looking at the law around um, surveillance cameras around Wagga Wagga and some of the issues there around privacy and facial recognition and the use of technology. So there are all kinds of opportunities depending on your interests and experience and they change every semester. So um, sort of unlimited kinds of um, opportunities via PACE. Yeah, PACE is just a really good way on how to get that practical experience that really goes beyond what you're learning in the textbook and in the classroom. Yeah. So we've I, I should, I'm sorry, I should probably add outside of COVID times, there is also an opportunity sometimes for students to do PACE units overseas. So we've Obviously, we've had to put a, um, a halt on that, but there are, what we do do is we work with overseas organisations remotely. 
So we have students working on matters for human rights clinics in the Philippines and in Cambodia, for instance, at the moment. So it's an international experience as well, even if it's you know remote experience. Mm -hmm. I myself have actually done a PACE unit overseas. I was uh, working in Jakarta and I was in a think tank, a policy institute doing research there. And it was really cool because I got to be able to publish my own research through the organization. So that was a really good way to get out of the classroom and do mm -hmm. something that's quite practical. Fantastic. So we have a few questions about uh, prior learning and recognition of prior learning. Can you give us just a basic idea about how that would work, please? So um, Macquarie University recognises prior learning from other institutions, provided that it's at the same level and it's relevant for your course. So if you've done a postgraduate law unit at another university, you can apply for recognition of prior learning um, for that unit as part of your, and it, you know, we would credit it towards your Juris Doctor. But it, yeah, it would need to be postgraduate law studies if you're applying for RPL for the Juris Doctor. A question for you, David. Uh, I've had a few, do you need to be an eloquent individual? Do you need to be a certain age? Do you need to be extroverted? Uh, is this the case for the Juris Doctor? Um, I wouldn't say so. Um, I would say that the, the Juris Doctor at Macquarie kind of brings everyone, that it's not just looking for a certain type of individual, that it really helps and works with everyone. So in one of my classes, we had, um, um, this was before COVID, um, <laughs> in one of my tutorials in a class of like the 20 of us, um, the um, lecturer, the tutor, um, really focused on making sure that everyone actually had an opportunity to speak and say their opinion and would actually, f um, as in a very comfortable environment and very comfortable scenario, he would really prompt and push people to make sure that they're actually like um, understanding what's going on, but also speaking in a way that is um, very easy for many people to understand that he wouldn't um, push people to respond. He would actually go and say, um, um, say, David, do you feel comfortable answering, answering this question or have you got a good answer for it? And if you didn't, it wouldn't count against you. It wouldn't, you wouldn't be diminished by it. He would then just loop back around to you like towards the end to make sure that everyone had an opportunity to speak up. And even if you are unsure about something, he would then talk it through with you. And that's what I found across all my units as well, that everyone really has an opportunity to speak up and say what they want, regardless of whether um, you... Um, are eloquent at doing it so or whether you're confident that ever, it's a very comfortable environment and a safe environment to learn. And with this contacting your tutor, is it, uh, you know, scary big law tutor that you have to go and knock on their door or what's the process with that? So I, I suppose the process at the moment has changed a little bit, um, mainly because of COVID. So a lot of the um, stuff is online at the moment and um, you have access to a page, an internet page um, for your course. And it's a very simple button that you click to go communicate with your privately with your tutor. So it's not as if everyone in your cohort has to see what you're asking, but it's very easy to just like send a quick message. And I've found that the messages are answered very, very quickly. So it's, it shows that um, both the lecturers and the tutors attention to both the page and the students that they're teaching is paramount to them. Is this the case for you, Dr. Barry? Yeah, and I think um, it's, it's been amazing actually how, what a great connection we can have with students over Zoom as well. So I've been running my tutorials over Zoom, but I've also been running my consultation time over Zoom. So just as people would come to my office and uh, at a, you know, I have an hour every Monday when I'm available uh, and they just wait outside till, you know, I'm finished with someone. Now they wait in a virtual waiting room and, and then we have a, a, a video consultation. So we haven't lost touch with students, even though we've moved to online. It's been, it's been really great. Yep, fantastic. So we might just have time for one more question. So we've had a few confusions between undergrad law and the Juris Doctor. Is there 
what is the difference between these two and especially in terms of like job placement and progression in the future? Look, I think the, the biggest, well, there's two, there's two main differences. So if you were doing a straight, straight law as an undergraduate degree, it's a four year course. So as well as doing three years of law units, you would have one year where you have at Macquarie University, we call it a flexible zone, and you can take units from other parts of the university. You might want to do a major in computer science or um, security studies or something like that as part of an undergraduate degree. So um, it's a little bit longer as an undergraduate degree. Um, there's more availability of hex places in the undergraduate degree and that can sometimes be a factor for people as well. The Juris Doctor suits um, more mature age students. Um, it has an external cohort, the undergrad doesn't, so you can only do the undergraduate degree as an internal student. If you wanna be an external student, uh, you need to start that as a, as a Juris Doctor at Macquarie. So there's a couple of differences in terms of the delivery mode and the Juris Doctor probably, I would say, caters more to mature age students and to people who are, are working, looking for a career change. But in terms of ultimate career destinations, both an undergraduate law degree and a Juris Doctor qualify you for admission into law. So there's no difference there in terms of, you know, your final legal destination or qualification. Thanks for that, Dr. Barry. So that will wrap up the webinar for this evening. It, sorry about not being able to get to all the questions, but the future students team will reach out to everyone via email and just answer any questions that we didn't get to. If in the meantime, you want to contact the future student team with any urgent questions, you can either phone us or email us or even book a one on one consultation, as you can see on the screen. Uh, apart from that, thank you to our panelists. Thank you, Dr. Lise Barry. Thank you, Mr. Walsh, uh, for your time tonight. And thank you, everyone, for e joining us on our webinar. Uh, we hope that was helpful. And apart from that, take care. Thank you.